The reason why some Nikon digital cameras capture foggy IR images at higher ISOs and longer exposures is due to the electronic shutter monitor feature built into some of these shutters. This shutter is from a Nikon D700 and it has one of these built in. Basically what this does is it emits LED light through the shutter onto the other side where it has a mirror that bounces the light back into the sensor and uh, into the IR sensor built into the shutter. And basically what it does is it actually measures how long the shutter stays open in comparison to how long the camera told the shutter to stay open. And if there's any differences, it corrects for those on the fly. The benefit to that is you get accurate sh exposures. And of course the <laughs> drawback is if you're an IR photographer with a converted camera, you can't really take longer exposures at higher ISOs because you'll get some foggy images. And there really isn't a way to disable this because if you take, turn this off or unplug it, the camera will just think your shutter is no longer functioning properly and give you an error message saying that you got to send your camera out to repair. Uh, and you can't really seal this off in any way because, well, it sits right on top of the sensor. And, uh, you know, so there's not much you can do. So this right here is from a Nikon G700. We also have one from the D3X. You know, and they all have the same design and a slightly different look, but uh, pretty much the same principle. This one's from a D3, and uh, fortunately, this newer D700, excuse me, the D7000 shutter right here, uh, capt basically the, the IR LED built into the electronic shutter monitor, cap uh, trans emits light much higher than what the sensor actually senses, so it basically does not affect the image whatsoever. So this is one of the only Nikon cameras that has the electronic shutter monitor feature that does not fog your IR images, basically. We've taken some dark field test exposures with the Nikon D700 at one second, everything from base ISO 200 all the way through 6400 with uh, no lens attached, just the body cap to get uh, nice black images and hopefully the uh, fogging will show up as a lighter tone. Let's check the ISO 200. As you can see, there's nothing in the image at all. And let's do a control L for levels on this to see. Um, and actually, the, the image comes out nice and black. There's no information recorded at all. So this ISO 200 is totally usable. ISO 400, still nothing visible to the eye. Let's do a control L. And you can see there's just a tiny little bit of information starting to show up. But again, nothing visible at all and totally usable. ISO 800 same thing there's more information showing up now but still completely invisible to the eye at ISO 1600 although it's still invisible to the eye there would be a little bit more information recorded as you can see the whole entire black level has shifted over to the dark grays now so the whole entire image is being affected but still not you know too visible to the eye let's do a quick enhancement with auto contrast to, to uh, stretch those levels through entire range to show uh, basically enhanced version of this fog and you can see how it affects the image all the way from the right with being the the most affected to the left with some of a little bit of spots still visible let's check the 3200 you can still you can see that uh, there's a little bit of fogging showing up and you can start to see it now visually and at 6400 we'll definitely seeing fogging so, um, you know, I would recommend staying at ISO 800 or below. And, of course, this isn't going to be a problem for most everyday IR photography since this is done in sunny weather outdoors. You want to have a base ISO so that way your noise is the lowest. And since your exposures, uh, you know, are short and you want them short, you don't want any movement to your foliage, um, then, you know, this is not going to be an issue at all. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed this and, and it was helpful to you guys to show you that uh, it's still completely usable, these cameras that have this issue. Now, I, we do have uh, uh, the G700 zip file that you can download of, these, of this series in the FAQ section. So you can play with it for yourself and see how it um, would affect your images.